All right, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rachakwadash, which is to say the only true names of the Heavenly Father in the name of His Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit in the ancient Hebrew tongue. I also want to give double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone who rule well, the top Bible teachers on the planet Earth today. I also want to send out a hearty Shalom to all the sincere brothers throughout the four corners of the Earth that push the unadulterated truth of the Bible and risk their lives doing so in efforts of waking up the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. And to the believers and the few sisters that watch, I say shalom on you as well. This is your brother Karab from the Great Millstone, Miami, coming back at you with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai. And Lord willing, this is edifying. Okay. Now what I want to speak on in this lesson is the uh, you know, the fact that um, you know, collectively Okay, uh, as the hopefully elect, you know, and those uh, those of us who, you know, sincerely uh, worship Yahweh by Shemi Shai, okay, and believe in the unadulterated uh, version of the scriptures, okay. Well, the the fact of the matter is that we we're all catching hell, okay, and um, it's a part of it, okay. It, it's it's prescribed, you know, and. Um, you know, none of us are exempt from it. Okay, as the scriptures tell us, what we're troubled on all sides. Uh, Psalm the thirty-fourth chapter says, "Many are the afflictions of the righteous." You know, but the 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 the, the bonus, okay, or the balance to that, Salakia, the balance to that is, uh, you know, that uh, the heavenly Father, uh, it, it, hey, uh, quoting that uh, Psalms thirty-four, it says, uh, "Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Most High delivereth them out of them all." You see, and that's the part that we are supposed to focus on. OK, why? Because our focal point is, is supposed to be solely on this truth, man. OK, now, obviously, we have jobs, we have families, you know, uh, you know, other obligations in life. OK, but our focal point should be on this truth. OK, on these scriptures, you know, because, uh, like I said, you know, those other things that we have to deal with, you know, that's, you know, part of the movie. You know, those are things that we <laughs> have to tend to, you know, meaning, um, you know, you got to go to work. You know, <laughs> you know, these are things that you have to do. Like, you know, what I'm saying the scriptures say that we're subject unto payments. So you got to go to work. You got to pay bills. OK. And if you have a woman and you have children, then you have to, you know, be a provider. You have to take care of them, you know. But nonetheless, our focal point is supposed to be on these scriptures, man, on this word. OK, why? Because we understand the times that we're living in, you know, and, you know, what what helps us to focus more on this truth <laughs> is the hell that we catch, man, you know, being troubled on all sides. OK, as you see in this illustration here, this is out of, the, you know, Book of Second Ezra, where it, it talks about that narrow path, you know, where, where fire on, the, on one side and water on the left. OK, well, that's the path that we're all traversing. OK, and, and one at a time, you know, uh, uh, great news is that uh, we had a, a company of renowned men, OK, ancient men that walked before us down this path. OK, and then also here on Earth, we have examples of, of, of men uh, uh, starting with our elder apostles that are walking down this path as well. You know, um, so we don't have to reinvent the wheel. You know, all we have to do is follow suit. OK, and everything has been jotted down in the scriptures, you know, but nonetheless, it's not a cakewalk. You just don't look like a cakewalk to me <laughs> with fire on, on one side and water on the left. And you can't turn to the left or to the right, but you got to go straight, you know, meaning what? Yeah, we're going to be tried, man. OK, we're going to be tried, meaning the, the hells that we catch now and then, you know, uh, uh, the, the temptations that we have to deal with when all hell, all, you know, uh, when shit hits the fan, so to speak. Okay. But the reality is all of these things are happening to us. Okay. So that what we're prepared. Okay. Really the heavenly father is in the process of making us numb. Okay. To the things that we're going to have to face. You see, and that's the bonus of being chastened now. You see, that's why the scriptures say, uh, 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 well, I, I remember King David said uh, in one of the Psalms, I forget which one. He said, um, you know, uh, chasten me not in the time of trouble. 
Okay. So how how does that happen? Well, you have to be chastened now so that what you're not judged. <clears throat> you're not judged with the world. Okay. So yeah, brothers, hey, what we're going through is a part of the process. You know of 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 you know of making us those men that the heavenly Father is is seeking for. Okay. That that governing body. You know what 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 type of training uh, 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 does a man that. Uh, you know, it's going to be set to rule over the universe, to rule over angels. Okay. Well, hey, that's what we're going through, man. You know, so no further ado, let's jump in. First precept of Job chapter five, verse 17. It says, behold, happy is the man whom the most high corrective. Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the almighty. You see, so that's a hint. You said, I read it again. Verse 17, behold, happy is the man whom the most high corrective. Right. And that's what happened, man. You know, uh, uh, prior to us coming into this ministry. OK. Um, you know, as Yahweh Shai told Nicodemus, we had to be born again. OK. And a part of you being born again, you have to be corrected. You see, because why? We were taught all the wrong things, you know, uh, uh, in this world, especially when it came to uh, what the world refers to as religion, okay, which the Bible is not a religious book, okay, are there religious practices in it? Of course, okay, but uh, as far as you know, falling on the category of religion, the true understanding of the scriptures, no, it doesn't, okay. It's a heritage. It's a, it's a book of law, statutes, and commandments, and a book of prophet prophecies, you know, dedicated to who the Israelites, okay, you Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indians, and Haitians. You see, so, you know, uh, that's what ha has happened. OK, it has happened and is is continuing to happen and won't really fully uh, uh, complete itself until Lord willing, we're delivered, man. OK, Lord willing, we're those men. OK, our, our correction won't be a full correction will not take place until we were changed. OK, we get those new bodies and we're delivered out of this out of these chains of darkness. OK, which is the flesh that we're in now. OK, which is subject to sin. You see, so it says, uh, behold, happy is the man whom the most high corrective, therefore despise not thou the chastening of the almighty. So you see, so it's connecting uh, being corrected with chastening. You see, now let's go into this word chastening here. So it's Mawazar. Um, it says discipline, chastening, correction, discipline, correction. Uh, chastening. OK, so pretty much, you know, discipline. OK, so that's what that's what chastening is. You see, and that's what the Heavenly Father is doing. He's di he's disciplining us just like what our Lord Yahweh Shai did with the 12. OK, they began as what his disciples and then eventually became what apostles, meaning those sent forth. OK, but first they were disciples, meaning they were disciplined under the tutorage of our Lord Yahweh Shai. OK, who the word ignorantly called Jesus. So guess what? You know, Lord willing with, with those men. What well, we're being the chastening that, that that befalls us is actually disciplining us, okay, and it's a part of our correction, right? So verse seventeen it says, "Behold, happy is the man whom the Most High corrective; therefore despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty." Verse eighteen, for he maketh sore, and he bindeth up; he woundeth, and his hands make whole. You see. So that's what's going on, man. We're being torn down. We're being built up. We're be he's tearing this off. He's building this back up. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's a part of a, a, a refinement, you know? And that's what, you know, and that's how we have to look at it, you know, because the scriptures say no chastening for the moment seem joyous. You know, you, you, you catching high holy hell, 
you know, car breaking down, this, that, or the third, whatever it might be, okay? This shit ain't joyous for the moment, okay? But understand, this is a part of the Heavenly Father correcting you. You see, hey, hey, the scriptures tell us uh, that um, um, he that spareth the rod hateth his child, right? And what does that rod represent? A form of what? Chastening. You know, your child goes off and does something wrong, you chasten him with the rod. Right? Why? Because you want to whip him into shape. You you want to uh, him to learn from the mistake he made, opposed to little, little Pookie or little Ray Ray of the block who who pops, you know, in and out of prison, and mom is 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 twice the demon, and you know, not giving chastening him any at all. Well, guess what? He's gonna repeat that same cycle as his pops. You see, and that's why the scripture said, uh, you know, roughly paraphrasing. Um, he, he, he chastens his elect, okay, the elect, okay, and that's what it ultimately boils down to. Only the elect will be chastened, okay, and he says he, he chastens his elect, okay, but uh, 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 he chastens his elect as sons, right, and not as bastards, you see, so if the Lord is not chastening you, then you're considered a bastard, and he doesn't love you, okay, why, because you don't love him, see, and, and what is loving in the heavenly father? Keeping the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of your ability. Okay? And it's mainly <clears throat> through having faith in our Lord, Yahweh Shai. Okay? Let's precept this with, uh, I think it's Hebrews. Yeah, this is the book of Hebrews. Let me see. Yep, Hebrews 12 and 6. It says, For whom, for whom Yahweh by Shemia was shy loveth, he chasteneth. You see? So, you know, hey. <laughs> like I may mention, like the scriptures say, it don't seem joyous, but your your mental has to be stayed on. You know what? The Lord is 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 is, is working on me, man. Okay. And then, you know, that's the what. Okay. And then why? Why is the Lord working on me? Well, hey, according to the scriptures, because He loves me. You know, and the only way, and and I love Him as well. But the scriptures say the only way that we can love Him. Is if he loved us first, you see, and that has to be the focal point, you know, and and and, and you know, because the reality behind it, a lot of guys have fallen out because they despise the chastening of the Almighty, you know, like we just read in Job the fifth chapter, you know, they, 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 the kitchen got too 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 hot for him, man, you know, and started to scold him, and they're like, man, I got to get out of here, man, you know. When it really wasn't scolding them, you know, it, it just seemed that way. It was a figment of their imagination. Okay. Now, hey, hey, brothers deal with infirmities, you know, getting mishaps, you know, car accidents, things of that nature. So sometimes get, you know, get bodily harm. Okay. But guess what? The, the truth is still within their loins, the loins of their mind, you know. And as long as you have that, the Holy Spirit, the Rakakwadash, you know. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Holy, as long as you have that, you got enough uh, uh, juice to continue to fight, man. You know? And then it, and it all boils back down to faith. Where, where does your faith lie? Do you do you wholeheartedly believe that the Heavenly Father is with you? And, 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 and regardless of what you go through, okay, he's made promises to his elect. You know? You, you have to believe that, man. Okay, or you you won't make it, and that's what happened with a lot of guys. It got too hot, and they said, "You know what? I'm out of here, man," because they had a a, 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 a a false perception that okay, yeah, I'm in the truth. I'm serving Yahweh Shmuel Prosperity, prosperity. Everything's supposed to go uh, honky dory. Nope. Mm -mm. You're not understanding the, the the big picture. Okay, the Lord is gonna put you through things to what to make you numb to what's actually about to happen. You see? And that's how you got to look at it, man. You know, because, hey, we're going to be faced with scenarios that we we read it, you know, we prophesy it, we, 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 
we get redundant with it, you know, but still we're going to be put in predicaments that are going to be a test and a trial of our faith. You see? So it only makes sense why the Heavenly Father is putting us through, you know, certain afflictions now. Because he wants us numb, man, to the point where we, look, Lord, I want out of this goddamn place, you know? By any means necessary, if I have to die for the testimony of Yahweh Shemi, I shall so be it, you know? But just numb to everything that, that can and will be taken away from us, man, okay? Because the reality is, the Lord said, if you are of the election, you're going to be merry and have abundance. That's on this side. But it all boils back down to faith, okay? And obviously, I'm speaking to myself first and foremost. This is Hebrews 12 and 6. It says, for whom Yahweh Shemi, I shall love he chasteneth, and he scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. You see that? So hey, you gotta you got you gotta take it in stride, man. Look, I'm I'm catching hell because the Lord loved me, man. Okay? And it ain't no harm in saying that, okay? Right? Because your mind needs to be programmed with that. You need to know that the love of your how about Shemi Shah resides in you. Cause it's gonna be us against the world real soon. Okay, we're gonna be ostracized. We're going to be, the fingers are going to be pointed at us wrongfully, you know? But as long as we're stabilized uh, in these scriptures and, and, and hey, so wisdom and knowledge, right? It's going to be the stability of our times, you know? Let let the scriptures, let let the, our faith in Yahweh Hashem Yahushah be our stabilizing factor, man. Verse 7, it says, If ye endure chastening, the Most High dealeth with you as with sons, for what son is he? Whom the father chasteneth not. You see? So like I quoted in what's said in Proverbs, it say, uh, uh he, he that spareth the rod hateth his son. Okay. But he that loveth his son causeth him to feel it often. You see? So that's why it seemed like the Lord riding you. Yeah, because he wanna whip you in the shape, man. So that you can endure the times that are coming and then ultimately be the the, the a, a part of that governing body, you know, Lord willing. Verse eight, it says but if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. You see? Then are you bastards and not sons. You know? So these are things that we have to meditate on, man. Especially as, it, you know, the times that we're, we're entering into, the times that are approaching. Prophecy is unveiling itself. Okay? Hey, but that's a good thing. Okay, that's a good thing because we know hell has to uh, uh, ha hell has to ensue before deliverance comes. It's, it's just how it was written, and it ain't gonna happen no other way, you know. But long as our focal point is on Yahweh by Shmuel Shai and His kingdom and His truth, then a hey, as the scriptures say, we should never fail. This is Sirach Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. Uh, chapter two, I mean, yeah, chapter two, verse one, it says, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. You see? So when you come into this thing, prepare, hey, the Lord tell you, look, you know, he's sitting you down, you know, hey, look, this thing of ours, hey, well, speaking in his, you know, his words, this thing of mine, hey, if you're going to come into it, you better prepare yourself to be tempted. Okay. Hey, the scriptures say the, uh, the servant is not greater than his master. Our Lord Yahweh was tempted, you know, at a very, very, very vulnerable time, too. You know, after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, you know, and being tempted by the tempter himself, <laughs> Satan. You see? So we're not above. We're not above Yahweh Shah. So we're going to have to go through that, too. And we go through it now. You see? And really pretty much since your first day in this, in this thing, man, when the Lord called you out of the world and brought you into this this ministry, man. Okay, you've been tempted. You see? <clears throat> set thy, verse 2, set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. You see? Because, hey, you know, being hasty in, in, in a certain scenario can, can also cause you to lose your life, man. Okay? Especially the times that we're coming into. You see? <clears throat> But that's not our focal point. Our focal point is on keeping the faith and asking the Heavenly Father to increase our faith, you know? And guess how that happens? By you constantly going through things, you being troubled on all sides, you going through afflictions, 
Okay, the scriptures say that what we're poor and afflicted people. You know, and and guess what? We we are still under the curses. You know, we still are under the curses, man. Okay, but the great news is, hey, we're at the end. You know, Lamentations the fourth chapter. Okay, tells you that uh, 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 you know, you know, Esau Edom persecuting us when. Our, our, our uh, iniquity had its end, you know, roughly paraphrasing, meaning our, our time is almost up, you know, but uh, as the scriptures say, hey, he's going to come in like a madman sparing none, you know, and some of us, hey, 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 hey we'll, 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 you know, be put in certain uh, circumstances where we might be, you know, uh, uh, you know, torture tactics, you know, spat on and, and slapped. Hey, our Lord, Yahweh Shai went through it, you know, and that needs to be the focal point. But the process of, you know, preparing on stabilizing our minds for that takes place now. You see, verse two, it says, set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. Meaning set your heart aright. Meaning what? Get your mind right. Your heart is your mind. Okay. And how do you get your mind right? Stand in these scriptures, man. Okay. Okay, uh, uh, focusing on the truth. Verse three, it says, cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy latter end. You see? So, he, and, I, and I love, this is one of my favorite chapters, you know, in the Bible period, you know, because it's pretty much giving you the rundown on how to, 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 to maneuver in this ministry. You know, for those of us who've been called to, to uh you know to preach to prophesy okay it, 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 you know obviously we have to teach we have to prophesy and we have to study we have to read okay you know but there's also a code you know for, for us to walk by and that's what we're reading here verse four it says whatsoever is brought upon thee take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate you see so whatsoever it said whatsoever it don't say you know the good things take cheerfully no the good and the bad the good bad and the ugly take it cheerfully why because you're being chastened chastened as a son and not as a bastard okay and the lord loves you say who the lord loveth i mean who uh uh he that hateth his son uh uh you know he that uh he that hateth his son spareth the rod but the Lord ain't sparing a rod with us, man. You know, brothers, give testimonies, man. We, we we go off, Lord, jack your ass up right away, man. And you know why. You like, God damn it, I knew I shouldn't have did this, or I knew I shouldn't have did that. You know? Well, that's a great thing, man. Because guess what? The Lord ain't chastening uh, 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 Kodak Black and these other monkeys, you know? At least not how he's doing us, to the point where... He's keeping us on a straight and narrow, okay? And that's how, you know, an uh, 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 overbearing parent is 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 to be uh, perceived, you know? Like, uh, he's too strict, you know, stern. But, you know, now some cases, those kids turn out to be super demons, you know? But, hey, in a, in a perfect world, you know, a child that's often chastened, not because, hey, I speak for myself. I, I was chastened, you know, by my father. He didn't He didn't play that shit, man. You know, he, he come from the country, he from Mississippi, man, and he didn't play that shit, man. And I was on a straight and narrow, you know, I, you know, after I graduated, you know, I spent, went left, you know, but as far as in his household, no, nah, I had to rock a straight and narrow, man. Okay, why? Because he chastened me often. So, hey, how much more when the most high is chastening you at every turn? What, what it does is it builds a different type of fear in you, man. You know, the fear that the majority of these people on this planet can't have specifically speaking about israelites okay negroes latinos native americans west indians and haitians okay a fear that they, they they just won't attend to why because you have to fear in a power that you can't see you know it's bigger than having a zeal you know like yeah i know there's god you know i said but do you fear him okay do you fear him like if you open the door and you saw a lion standing at your door like bearing down on you okay well that fear times seven million Okay, that's the type of fear we're supposed to develop for Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. It says, for, for whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. Okay, and a lot of times when you're changed to that lower state, the Lord is, is trying you, trying to see, okay, you're low. 
because what did our Lord Yahweh Shai refer to himself as? I am meek and I am lowly. Okay, so guess what? You're in great company. So when you get brought to that lower state, guess what? You got faith in Yahweh by Shemia Shai. He gonna raise you back up. You know, and that's what this thing is about: riding that roller coaster. You know, up, going up, going down, going up, going down, going up, and going down. Because what does that create? Balance, right? Verse five. It's a good point right here. It says for the uh, for gold. Is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. You see? So that's what it's all about. You know? But the, 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 the competition is this flesh, man. This flesh, you just ain't going to get it. The scriptures say the flesh profit of nothing. Our Lord Yahweh Shah said it profit of nothing. It is the spirit that quickeneth. You see? Surely the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. This, this flesh is, is trash, man. And we know these things, but when we get in a pickle, you're like, oh, you know, sometimes you get stressed. It's because of the flesh. It ain't the spirit, you know. That's why we're, we're, we're urged to walk in the spirit and deny the flesh. Verse 6, it says, believe in him and he will help thee order thy way aright and trust in him. You see? So this is this what's going on. The Heavenly Father is building up our trust in him because all these, you know, adversities that we go through, these trials and tribulations, okay, which, you know, are, are, are minute, okay, compared to what we're about to go through. But guess what? There, 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 there's, it's, it's, uh, like the scriptures say, I mean, not, not the scriptures, like a Elder Apostle Gabal likes to say, a, 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 adversity, I mean, not adversity, Repetition is the father of skill, you see? So we're constantly going through these affliction and adversities and, and, and uh, trials and tribulations and afflictions, you see? Eventually, it's going to make you numb. You're like, fuck all. I don't give a damn about nothing that, 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 that ain't conducive to my salvation. And that's the spirit that we got to be in, you know, coming down the stretch. You know, a lot of brothers' faces are going to be on the news and things of that nature. Like I said, they're going to be pointing the finger saying you did this and you did that. Hey, but when you numb to that, she don't care. You don't give a shit. You can say what you want to say. You're not the judge, Esau or Edom. The Most High is the judge. Okay? He put it down one and set it up another. You bitch, you. <laughs> you know, what can man do to me? You know, but this is the process is now. You know, and I've been hearing through the grapevine, you know, brothers catching it, man. Brothers catching it. And, you know, you, you best believe the elder apostles catching it. Don't look at the elder apostle Ramlob had to, you know, went out to Indiana, just, you know, get get his health right, man. He was gone for a while, too. You know, so, this, hey, it, it, it's happening to to, to 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 the body of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, okay, which are the men here on earth. We, we all catching it. You know, but hey, we are extremely comforted by the scriptures. And we, it ain't nothing that you, you bitch and moan about because we at war. You, you know, I got shot in my pinky. It hurts so bad. No, 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 man. You wrap that shit up and let's go, man. You know? <clears throat> we in a spiritual warfare, okay? So uh, 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 spirituality in a, in, a, in a sound mind. Is, is king. That's why the Heavenly Father has given us such. But this is our first Peter. We'll close out with this one. This is first Peter's chapter four. First Peter 4 and 12. And you see at the head it says, share, share the sufferings of Hamashiach. Okay. So this is First Peter chapter 4, verse 12. It says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. Okay, to try you like what? Like gold is tried in the furnace. Okay. And like we read in Sirach, the second chapter, acceptable men. In the furnace of adversity, you see? So that's how you gotta look at it, man. Hey, do we know if we're the leg? Hey, we hope to be. We expect to be. 
we're putting on as the hopeful elect, but we don't know. We pray that the Heavenly Father keeps his Holy Spirit upon us. But when you hear these things, things of this nature, and you actually fit the bill, you got to rejoice in it, man. You got to rejoice in it. Why? Because you fit the bill. Okay? And it ain't because anything you did. It's all of what Yahweh Shemiah Shah has done. You see? Verse 12, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. You see? And, and that's that's how the flesh operates. Some happen like, what? What the fuck? You serious? But then the spirit kicks in like, bro, <laughs> stop. Why does a man yet complain that is a sinner? You know, read that in uh, Lamentations. I believe that's uh, I believe that's in uh, Lamentations, the fourth chapter, around about thirty-eight or something like that. You know, but like, yeah, the, you know, the spirit will kick in, like, oh, all right, bro, you know, chill out, suck it up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Stop, stop poking your lips out. Stop being emotional. You know, but it's the it's the flesh, and that's the constant battle. You know, but that's why we. That, hey, this it is this, uh, the, the, it is the spirit that quick enough, the flesh profit of nothing. You see, it's got to be a constant reminder. Speaking to myself first and foremost, verse twelve again. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Verse thirteen. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Hamashiach's suffering. See. So we're all small microcosms of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. Okay, if the scriptures say, what? If we suffer with him, we're going to reign with him. So just like he saw the joy that was set before him, we have to envision that same thing. There's joy set ahead of those that are partakers in Yahweh Shai's sufferings, man. Okay, those that believe in Yahweh Bashmiah Shai. You know, that those who wait on his coming. Those who are chastened as sons is not, and not as bastards. It says that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. You see, these, this, is, this is promised to us, man. The Most High said what he had to say. Now we got to do what we got to do. Verse 14, it says, if ye be, if ye be reproached for the name of Hamashiach, Happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of the Most High uh, resteth upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. You see? So there, there is contention and, you know, you know, we're, we're on a winning team. We're on a winning team. And, and like I, I keep reiterating, look what our Lord Yahweh Shai had to go through. Look what the 12 went through. Look what... All of the renowned men of the scriptures had to go through, you know, ups and downs, trials and tribulations, chastening. Right. Verse 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as a evildoer or as a busybody in other men's uh, other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, OK, which they didn't. You know, we were called Christians, you know, really the word should be anointed. So yet if any man suffer as an anointed, OK, or, or as the anointed. You see, because uh, that's what uh, or, or Mashiach, which uh, the way you say anointed in the Hebrew. OK, so if anybody suffer as a Mashiach, right, verse 16, yet if any man suffer as a Mashiach. Let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify the most high on this behalf. You see? So this is all a part of the process, brothers. And, you know, it's going to ratchet up. It's going to lower down. It's going to ratchet up. It's going to lower down. But it's all in the efforts of making us numb to the, the, the most horrendous times in the history of mankind, which, you know, as the scriptures say, you know, only with your eyes shall you behold the judgment of the wicked, roughly paraphrasing. And, um, you know, 10,000 shall fall at thy right, 10,000 at thy left, but it shall not come nigh thee. These are things that we have to meditate on, okay? The, 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 the tribulation, death, and the anguish 
that is for the wicked, not for the righteous. Okay. So yeah, it's all about a focal point and a mindset, man. Okay. And ultimately the Lord is making us know, you know, and, and, and just trust the process. So with that, I say, Kwame Yashirala, Shalom.